Today on Nineworx TV, the curious case of the Porsche 964. Once considered the most unloved generation of Porsche 911, arguably now it's the most popular. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at why that is and also why values are still set to climb ever higher. There's quite a story attached to the third generation of Porsche 911. Introduced in 1989, the 964 replaced the outgoing G-bodied era that was in production for a whopping 15 years. And it's fair to say upon the 964's arrival, enthusiasts weren't bowled over by a car that was seemingly being overawed by nannying technology, technology that allegedly was robbing the 911 of its purest driving experience. The technologies in question were ABS and power steering and perhaps most prominently, all wheel drive. That's right, the Porsche 964 is the first 911 that got all wheel drive and it's left quite a legacy. As we know, all wheel drive technology has been available on 911s ever since. And in the current 992 generation, in fact, the 911 Turbo and the 911 Targa are only available in all wheel drive. Porsche at the time said the 964 was 85% new over the outgoing G-body 911s. It had a subtle, more sleek design, removing from the 911 styling those awkward looking impact bumpers with the bellows. The whale tail had gone on the back, replaced by an active rear wing that popped up at 50 mile an hour, went down at six. In the back as well, the engine had changed. It had gone up from 3.2 to 3.6 liters in capacity and had switched to uh, twin spark plugs for the first time. The interior as well was completely overhauled and that's very much the theme of the 964. It was modernized and brought the 911 into the modern sphere. Some of these changes, well in fact all of them really, were clearly to the benefit of the 911. Take the new subtle and sleek design for example, halved the drag coefficient of the 964 over the G-body car from 0.59 down to a much more respectable 0.32. So there was lots of change that went on for the 964 generation. And as I say, not all of it was well received by enthusiasts. So that popularity or lack of twinned with a world economic crisis meant that it's fair to say sales of the 964 didn't exactly fly off the block. Under the march of the time, the 993 would come along and quickly gain halo status as the last ever air-cooled Porsche 911. The 964 sat awkwardly somewhere in the middle of those perennially popular G-body 911s, which were lighter and had the race-derived 915 gearbox, alongside the 993, which was considered the thinking man's 911 because it was a lot more refined. And that's why as recently as 2012, you could pick up a 964 for about 12 grand. Now, as we know, the 10 years or 11 years since have been a complete turnaround for the Porsche 964. That lack of numbers, as we all know in the world of Porsche, usually leads to high desirability. And that's personified, really, by the 964. Their lack of numbers, plus interest from third-party resto modders, such as single vehicle design, for example, has made people look at these cars in a completely different way. And now it's viewed as the sweet spot between modernity with some handy technologies such as ABS and such as power steering um, in a traditional 911 package. That we think has caused values to jump up. But with the 964 being brought out in 1989, these cars are actually as old as me. So I'd be lying if I said I was completely au fait with their introduction some 30 odd years ago. It's time therefore to speak to Phil Raby here from Philip Raby Porsche, who's got a lot more experience than I have and is able to add some real meat to the bones in terms of the 964's initial popularity or lack thereof. My first main experience with the 964 was when I was working on 911 Porsche World, probably getting on for 20 odd years ago. Okay. And I bought a really nice forest green 964 from Germany. And I think I paid 9,000 pounds for it. Um, it was a cracking car. I drove it for a little while. Um, it was featured in the magazine quite a bit. I like to think I sort of helped push the 964 values up. Um, it sold back to Germany, I think, for about 30,000 quite a few years ago, and it'd be worth a lot more than that now. For many years, the 964 was the ugly duckling. The 993 came along. Everyone's always loved 993s. The 964 was a bit unloved. Nobody wanted them. People thought they, they were troublesome. 
they leaked oil, flywheels went pop. In fact, I do remember Auto Farm, they had a lady there running their car sales and she refused to sell 964s because they were too much trouble. Um, and the 996 was a similar car. It was, it was the unloved car and the 997 was always the one people wanted. And now, it's cool. of course, it's all changed with the 996 and the 964. Everybody wants both of them. People said, oh, the, the Creo 4 is understeered, which to be fair, they do, but you could tweak that with a sort of the suspension and even getting the tire pressures right. Um, if you get a, a 964 set up properly, they're brilliant. People bought them cheap for like nine, 10 grand, didn't put the money into looking after them. So there were some ropey ones around. And of course, they didn't make that many. They made a lot more 993s. It's much easier to buy a good 993 these days, or if it has been for many years, because 903 has always been looked after. 964s, a lot of them weren't. A lot of people are saying they prefer the shape. They like the upright headlamps. Um, we get people coming in saying they don't like the look of the 993, which I don't get myself. But I do get that the traditional headlamps are kind of part of the classic Porsche appeal. There's also a bit of more raw driving experience. It hasn't got the multi-link rear suspension, so that makes it feel a bit more lively. It makes a slightly rawer sound. So it is more of an experience. A 993 is more refined. It's a better car around the 993 on paper, but there's something about 964. It just feels really special. I suspect the values have gone up more because people have started to realise they are really good cars, and, and the rare cars, and everybody seems to want them now. Knowing where Porsche 911s have gone to since, technologically speaking, the idea of holding power steering and ABS against the 964 is completely laughable. This by no means feels like a car that's besieged by technology. It's quite the opposite, in fact. And again, as I pointed out back at Phil Raby HQ, these days the 964 is seen as that real sweet spot. They offer a very visceral drive that's quite unlike any 911 since. The 964 is definitely a lot louder than a 993. That's very welcome. The ride is a lot more dialed in over the 993 as well. And again, for a toy, which is what these cars are, I think it just hits the perfect sweet spot. I really do. Particularly when compared to the 993, they just talk to you more. Oh, how good does that sound? They're small, they're nimble, mechanically they're just rawer than the 993 and anything that's gone afterwards. Oh, it sounds so good. I'm only poodling in first. Okay, now the whole reason Porsche introduced all-wheel drive to its 911 lineup at the end of the 1980s was well, because the 911 had a reputation for going through hedges backwards, that rear engine, rear drive layout definitely has caught a few people out over the years. So Porsche instilled this uh, revolutionary at the time, all wheel drive 911 to compete with the likes of the popular Audi Quattro. It did come with a weight penalty. It's a hundred kilograms heavier than the 964 C2 that followed, which is quite a lot. For the 993 generation 911, Porsche would address the C4's weight penalty and uh, bring that weight deficit down by half, so down, by, down to 50 kilos rather than the 100. But again, in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't make a 964 feel heavy and cumbersome at all, actually. And what's far more obvious is how little and nimble the 964 is, even in C4 form as here. The car was still rear biased in terms of its drive. It's really important to point that out. So 69% of torque was sent to the rear, 39% going to the front axle. The car's overall weight distribution was 59% to the back, 41% to the front. So to all intents and purposes, it is still a traditional 911, really, certainly in terms of the weight layout and the majority of torque going to that rear axle. But it did just give you a little bit more over the nose. The caveat, of course, was a tendency to understeer, but a good geo will dial that out, and as Phil pointed out, addressing the tyre pressures as well. However, perhaps rightly so, it's the C2 that's viewed as more desirable. And this is where it gets interesting. It doesn't matter which 964 variant you go for these days. They've all gone up in value and appreciated handsomely over the past decade or so. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest they're still going to keep going that way going forward. It comes back to the numbers game. The 964 came out during a world economic crisis. 
It means that the 964 is the most scarce generation of Porsche 911. Only 62,000 of these were ever made to grace planet Earth. I mean, you compare that to 70,993s and 175,996s. Then, and this is where we stir the pot a little bit more, where the values of 964s were in the doldrums for years and years and years with a lot of ratty and tatty examples, they became ripe for resto modding. The lights of Singer took these and turned them into automotive works of art. That's completely what they are. A Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer is one of the most desirable cars in the automotive world, let alone Porsche. Singer's reimagining led to other resto modders doing their own reimagining of the Porsche 911. And so this whole kind of subculture of Porsche 964 based resto modding began. It's no coincidence, as far as I'm concerned, that in that time, values of these cars shot up. It's a complete sea change for what was once the unloved generation of Porsche 911. And that's just today for the cars that have been built so far. If all of these resto mod companies keep using the 964 as a base, or well, it goes without saying, the numbers are getting less and less. So therefore, and I've said this to a lot of people now away from the camera, Regardless of what 964 Carrera derivative you have, whether it's a rare non-sunroof uh, C2 coupe, down to manual of course, down to um, a C4 Tiptronic Targa at the other end of the scale, doesn't matter what it is. As the weeks go on, the numbers of these factory Porsche 964s are getting less and less and less. I don't feel like they're driven or they're seen as regularly as they used to be. And that is a great shame because these are fantastic 911s. The G50 gearbox is sweet as a nut. The 250 horsepower from, as I say, the twin plug, 3.6 litre, naturally aspirated flat six. Plenty of life in it, bags of character. Sounds great as well as we know. And again, they're just such a good car to hustle down the public road. Perfect, actually, for fast road driving for a weekend car. I mean, this is right up there with the best of them. It's not hard to see why people use this car, admittedly, as a base for resto modding and the potential you can unlock. But I think what we're forgetting and what is being overlooked here is its original stock factory charm because it has spades of it. Again, its size is perfect. It can really place this on the public road. And all right, the reason a lot of them were turned into resto mod potential is because the quality of the stock level generally was quite poor. They weren't worth a lot. They tended to be bought by people that perhaps couldn't afford to run them effectively. A little bit like 996s for a time. But the story is much evolved for the 964. And these days, the values of them, where they have, well, gone up fivefold, it's been worth ploughing good money into restoring them. And a lot of them have been responsibly restored, such as this one, which has had fantastic engine rebuild by a reputable specialist in the industry. The interior as well has been upgraded and improved, I have to say, it looks brilliant. The leather is awesome. The quality of the stitching is fantastic as well. I'm not sure what this is running across the top of the dash, but it definitely reduces glare, which is something that's often overlooked actually when it comes to a color and material choice on dashboards. So whilst a lot of the stock or fodder at the time was ripe for resto modding, now it's not quite the case. And actually, I think there's something to be said for just leaving these things as they are and heaven forbid, enjoying them. Because the numbers of these, unfortunately, are only going one way. And their increasing scarcity will of course mean inflated values. So if you are thinking of getting one, I'd definitely do it sooner rather than later. And I'd perhaps just use it for what it is. And that's a fantastic factory 911 right out of the box. Thanks as always for watching Nineworks TV. Thank you to Will and Phil at Philip Raby for loaning me this exquisite car. You can see more details on it on the Nineworks Marketplace. For now, thank you for watching Nineworks TV and I'll see you in another video soon.